Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Diane Ronaldo, and I'm the Executive Director of the Open RAN Policy Coalition, a coalition of global innovators that share the common goal of advancing a disaggregated radio access network and driving supplier diversity. As you may recall, in September of last year, the leaders of the quadrennial, India, Australia, Japan, and the United States, tasked the Open RAN Policy Coalition to lead a conversation on Open RAN as part of the Track 1.5 dialogue. It is clear that the Quad leaders understand the importance of secure and trusted network infrastructure, and we are honored to lead this work on their behalf. Today's session is the second event since the launch of the dialogue. The workshop will commence with industry and government presentations on existing test lab activity around the world. We will then proceed with two roundtables focused on maximizing the effectiveness of test lab activity moving forward. We encourage participation and are eager for the conversation. I am pleased to kick start this initiative. So without further ado, please be introduced to our first speaker of the evening, Mitsuhiro Hashita the Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. Deputy Director, could you please join us? Thank you for your time, yeah. and we look forward to your comments. Yeah, thank you, Diane, for your introduction. Hello, my name is Mitsuhiro Kishida. I'm a Deputy Director General for Global Strategy Bureau, MIT Japan. On behalf of the Japanese government, I'd like to make a few comments on the opening of this event. First, let me thank ORPG, Diane, and Alex, and other staff for preparing today's event. Since last year, the Quad government of Japan, the US, Australia, India have been discussing the importance of secure and reliable networks and the need for vendor diversification. And at the last track conference uh, held from November 30 to December last year, the four countries worked together to address this issue. As a result, uh, we were able to achieve the importance of secure, transparent, and open 5G architecture to the world at the PRAS conference in cooperation with other like-minded countries. And we were able to put together a document titled The Chairman's Statement on Telecommunication Supplier Diversity in the form of Chairman's Proposal at the conference. Well, in the, the PRAS proposal, the significance of promoting vendor diversification is clearly explained. It says in its, in its preamble that a diverse and competitive marketplace prevent dependence on a small number of suppliers, particularly those considered to be high risk or a single, single supplier, particularly or a single country in the telecom technology supply chain. It also says that open and interoperable telecom network supports its supplier diversity, contributing to supply chain resiliency and more secure, transparent, and reliable infrastructure. It also mentions that Interoperability is expected to lower barriers to entry and innovation, increase market-based competition, improve network management and security, and reduce costs. I think it is quite important to explain such significance of promoting vendor diversity in an easy-to-understand manner with actual examples and to expand support for this concept. In this regard, Quad government welcome ORPG's plan for convening a series of public-private events this year, including today's Open Line Showcase. And we also confirm our support for the organization of these events as a Track 1.5 industry dialogue on Open Line deployment and adoption. According to ORPG's plan, following today's uh, Open Line Showcase event, uh, tomorrow Open Line Test Lab workshop will be held. And I also heard that the second open lab forum will be held in April or May. It is highly important to demonstrate the actual use cases in this event to explain the feasibility and usefulness of vendor diversity. In this respect, when the first open lab forum was held in July last year, carriers and vendors from Japan, including Fujitsu, NEC, Lacte, and NT Docomo, participated and introduced their efforts. Well, today, more than a dozen vendors will be participating and giving presentations. Among them are NEC and Fujitsu from Japan, as well as various other vendors from the US, India, and Korea. It was, I also heard that NTT Docomo, a Japanese carrier that has been one of the first to promote multi-vendor technology, 
will also make a presentation today later. I really appreciate all of them for their participation today. And I hope that their presentation will be a meaningful input for the issue for the use cases of multiple vendor system. In addition, as a government, we'd like to continue a dialogue with like-minded countries, external to quad, so that multi vendor initiatives can be accepted in like-minded countries. We'd like to work together with private sectors on such overseas approaches. Lastly, uh, I'd like to announce that there will be an open related online event next week on 18th, I mean next Friday. We established Beyond 5G Promotion Consortium, a collaboration among industry, academia, and government in 2020, and it held the Beyond 5G International Conference last year in November. Uh, at that time, uh, it gathered more than 900 participants from about 50 countries, and at the time, the promotion of open architecture was one of the topics. So uh, we decided that uh, so, so, uh, this uh, open now, uh, uh, Beyond Fiberty Promotion Consortium has decided to set up a subcommittee called Open Now Promotion Subcommittee. And the kickoff event of this subcommittee is scheduled on 8 March 18, next Friday. And at the time, the, in, in, at that group, uh, online event, global participants such as the major carriers and vendors from the US, Europe, and Taiwan will be invited. Well, for, for connecting this information, uh, please refer to the uh, web page of the Your Privacy Promotion Consortium, and, and I'd like to ask the presenter later for such circulating this information as well. I wish you all for best for today's event. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you so much, Hashida san for those opening remarks. As ever, we're uh, delighted to have you uh, join us and um, provide some insights, not just on um, what we're seeing from uh, the Japanese side of things, uh, who have been leaders uh, in Open RAN since uh, since long before we have uh, have been talking about it at the Open RAN Policy Coalition, and um, uh, but also for your insights about things that are happening outside of the um, outside of Japan and across other uh, quad countries, um, I think we can all agree it's been uh, quite a remarkable past uh, year and a half as we've seen uh, many of the uh, the investments that have been taken, in particular through Japanese companies like Rakuten and, and NTT Docomo and NEC and Fujitsu. Um, as well as um, across our other partner governments. Um, we will in a moment turn over to um, Deputy Assistant Secretary um, uh, Stephen Anderson. Uh, but I think, are we still waiting on uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary to join? I think we are still waiting for you believe we are okay um, no problem uh, I did just want to then uh, use the opportunity um, to uh, mention to folks some of the other upcoming events that we are expecting to have um, over the next few months and hopefully you all will be able to join us for those um, in addition to the uh, the open round showcase that is taking place today um, we are also planning to do a um, Test Labs workshop, which will focus on the um, uh, the number of test labs that have been established over the past uh, year or two years, as well as others that are in the works um, across, uh, uh, specifically across quad countries. Um, following that, we will have a, a security-focused roundtable um, that will provide us with an opportunity um, to discuss the security of Open RAN. Um, and questions that, that both government and industry have um, around that area. Uh, subsequently, we will uh, host uh, over the next couple of months the second Quad Open Round Forum. Folks who may have joined us for that first event um, 
that was sort of our, our flagship event to kick off the, the track 1.5 process. We will have a, a follow-up to that event covering a range of these issues under a single um, sort of umbrella. Um, and then towards the back end of the year, we will um, look to cover uh, topics such as uh, financing of um, uh, open RAN deployments, both in the quad and elsewhere, um, as well as um, a number of other key pressing pressing issues for for governments. But um, we did I did want to uh, echo Diane's words from the beginning that um, we are honoured, along with our association partners, the US Chamber of Commerce, Kedon Ren and Asa Cham, um, to have been asked to uh, to lead this discussion. Um, and certainly it is an important one, um, uh, an important uh, fulcrum of, of uh, industry and government to make sure that this comes together. Um, Dan, I wonder if if you're still there, if we could perhaps um, uh, pass over a, a quick question to you, because I know that you have recently been over to um, Mobile World Congress, and um, there was a not, a, an awful lot of activity around Open RAN within that context. Are you able to sort of talk us through some of the things you're able to see on the ground at MWC? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, it looks like Stephen just joined. So, Stephen, welcome, um, and, and thank you so much for being with us. Uh, and and I was lucky enough to actually um, get to visit with Stephen for a little bit in Barcelona as well. Uh, just briefly, Stephen, if you don't mind, um, to answer Alex's question. I was just blown away by walking the floor at Mobile World Congress and seeing so many displays and mentions of Open RAN. Whereas when we started this conversation two years ago, we we're really on a 101. Um, you know, the who, what, and why of Open RAN, and then to go to the largest trade association uh, in the world and to see that, you know, it is the main topic of conversation. It was pretty heartening. Wonderful. Well, um, uh, thank you, Diane, and, and welcome to uh, Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary um, Stephen Anderson um, from the U.S. Department of State. Um, I will now turn things over to you for your remarks. So thank you so much, and I apologize for arriving late. I was actually waiting in a room that was apparently the wrong one. So two years into the pandemic, you can still have those uh, uh, those moments. But uh, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Diane. It was great to see you. And you're right; it was absolutely phenomenal to see um, how um, present Open RAN uh, was at uh, at the MWC in Barcelona. Thank you, Hashida San. Um, Good evening and good morning, everyone, uh, wherever it is that you might be watching from. As you know, my name is Stephen Anderson, Deputy Assistant Secretary for International Communications and Information Policy at the Department of State. I want to thank the Open RAN Policy uh, Coalition for convening this showcase and for its stewardship of the Quad Track 1.5 dialogue. Um, I'm going to speak briefly tonight on how the United States views open radio access networks from a domestic development perspective as well from a foreign policy angle. From the top, the United States continues to advocate for open, interoperable, reliable, and secure networks, adhering to the highest standards of trust. We stand for a vibrant and diverse digital economy that uplifts and empowers all citizens. And the US government has had many conversations and for a large and small, multilateral and bilateral about these important principles. But the global telecommunications industry is at a dawn of a new era, or as Diane pointed out, we might actually be right in the middle of it. There are impressive developments that offer new opportunities by breaking apart the full stack of proprietary closed hardware and software that suppliers traditionally have offered. These developments include open and interoperable approaches and architectures such as Open RAN, that offer the prospect of increasing supplier diversity and market competition, while also lowering costs and improving security, both through increased supply chain resiliency and through greater transparency into the networks. And this means network operators are no longer locked into a single supplier and can better withstand the geopolitical and market forces that may buffet them. These are all positive developments. Another reason the United States continues to stand for an open, interoperable, reliable, and secure networks 
at every level. Now, as a U.S. diplomat, I tend to focus on working with partners and allies to align our foreign policy objectives. But today, I want also to take the opportunity to share more detail about what the United States is doing within our borders. And as I do, I encourage you, whether you represent another government or a representative of the business community, to think of ways we can do better or perhaps areas where we can work together. Domestically, the United States is doing a number of things across our federal interagency, civil society, and the private sector, some of which I will highlight here. When the US Congress passed the Secure 5G and Beyond Act in 2020, it required a whole of government interagency strategy to not only secure 5G, but also to promote supplier diversity and supply chain resiliency. A vibrant, diverse marketplace of trusted suppliers gives operators greater choice lowering costs and driving innovation. The Federal Communications Commission is taking several actions to secure 5G networks against untrusted suppliers, most notably through the rip and replace order removing untrusted suppliers from networks nationwide pursuant to the Secure and Trusted Communication Network Act of 2019. Additionally, the FCC has solicited industry perspectives on how best to approach Open RAN through its notice of inquiry on Open RAN, receiving more than 60 comments from industry, representing equipment and software developers and network operators, as well as those from civil society. The FCC has also established two new innovation zones in Massachusetts and North Carolina, which will provide platforms for researchers to investigate 5G and beyond technologies, as well as to explore the, integra the integration of open RAN networks. The National Telecommunication and Information Administration in the US Department of Commerce issued a 5G challenge notice of inquiry in January of 2021, requesting information on how to utilize prize challenges to accelerate the development of the open 5G ecosystem. This was done in support of the Department of Defense industry interest in how Open RAN can assist in its mission. NTIA has also been actively supporting research and development through its frequent engagement with industry and through its Institute for Telecommunication Sciences. The United States also strongly promotes approaches to standards development that are multi-stakeholder, including with academia and civil society, open to participation no matter what size of the firm and transparent so that all participants know how decisions are reached and who advocated for what. We maintain a policy of technology neutrality so that the innovators inventing the future can develop the best solution driven by the best technology. Through this entire process, the FCC, NTIA, and the State Department have kept in close communication with the people actually doing the work and developing the technologies, the companies themselves. This includes through public notices of inquiry, requests for comment, and regular workshops and roundtables to ensure the policies and regulations enable, rather than hinder, the safe, responsible development and deployment of 5G. And in turn, US companies are in the vanguard of open RAN development, drawing on their experience in telecommunications, networking, and other digital spaces. These developments include network virtualization, slicing, security, and cloud technologies now being applied to Open RAN. As just one example, DISH Networks is rolling out a brand new Greenfield nationwide 5G network built around Open RAN principles. Now, if you track the press releases, they have signed deals with dozens of companies to build this network, literally dozens of companies, something that they can do because Open RAN means the hardware and software from one company will work together with another. Now, DISH touts significant benefits over traditional vertical networks, including security and the integration of multiple Open RAN vendors. Germany's One and One, which acquired 5G Spectrum in 2019, is planning to build a greenfield Open RAN network in Europe in partnership with Rakuten Mobile of Japan. It is no coincidence that these companies are able to start networks from the beginning or choosing Open RAN, or that incumbents such as Telefonica and Vodafone are staunch supporters as they upgrade their networks. Now I'm gonna talk about our international efforts and there might be some overlap with Hashida San because I'd say that the United States and Japan have just been fantastic partners in this effort. 
The United States is building support for supplier diversity and open RAN in multiple fora in the bilateral engagements, including webinars and workshops, as international consensus is key to ensuring global markets are vibrant and diverse. These include, obviously, since we're here, the Quad, ASEAN, OPEC, the G7, the OECD, and the US EU Trade and Technology Council. And of course, the Prague 5G Security Conference and recent Prague proposals on telecommunication supplier diversity. More than advocacy, however, the United States is actively partnering with like-minded countries globally to support supplier diversity in open RAN through test beds and through training, and by working with regulators and policymakers to understand and enable these technologies. The State Department-led Interagency Digital Connectivity and Cybersecurity Partnership, or DCCP, which supports multiple programs to promote an open, interoperable, reliable, and secure digital economy, is another mechanism we use to promote and support supplier diversity globally. In addition to in-country programming managed by USAID, including its Open RAN workshops, DCCP funds the Department of Commerce's Commercial Law Development Program to collect and share best practices from regulators and legislators around the world and to develop tools to responsibly source and deploy advanced telecommunications networks. USAID's International Open RAN Initiative is addressing the challenges of Open RAN deployment in developing countries. We believe that Open RAN presents valuable and important growth opportunities for these countries, including local manufacturing and jobs. To capitalize on this opportunity, USAID is launching Open RAN programs in the Philippines, Peru, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. These projects will focus on and seek to address specific barriers to open RAN adoption that the Open RAN Policy Coalition and the Open RAN industry helped us to identify, such as workforce skills, rural deployment, and equipment testing and certification. U.S. Trade and Development Agency, or USTDA, is actively promoting open RAN in developing countries as well, supporting local operators on open RAN deployments. This includes conducting pilot projects, providing feasibility studies and technical assistance, and hosting a series of stakeholder workshops designed to support an enabling regulatory environment for Open RAN. Now, already USTDA is supporting an Open RAN project in Nigeria with special attention to last mile connectivity in rural areas. In addition, USTDA is evaluating several pilot programs in developing countries around the world. The support for an open, interoperable, reliable, and secure telecommunications ecosystem, particularly of 5G and future networks and architectures such as Open RAN, is truly a whole of government effort here in the United States. The responsible global deployments of these networks and the digital economy that is being built on them are one of the most complex digital challenges facing operators and governments today. The US response reflects this complexity and tackles the challenges head on and in doing so contributes to the global effort to build a brighter, more inclusive, more secure digital future. As always, we look forward to working with you now and in the future to bring this to pass. Thank you very much and I look forward to the rest of the program. Back to you, Alex, thanks. Thank you so much uh, for, for those wonderful remarks and uh, for joining us today. And um, we also look forward to um, continuing the discussion with you tomorrow. Um, but as always, incredibly insightful. Um, we uh, will now transition over to um, a series of industry presentations. Um, we have uh, representatives from Qualcomm, Airspan, Fujitsu, Insego, NEC, NTT Docomo, Pivotal Comware, Radisys, Robin, Samsung, Sterlight, Tech Mahindra, and Worldwide Technology, um, who will be showcasing the various capabilities of their companies um, as it pertains to Open RAN. To kick us off, um, we will turn over to uh, Gerardo Giretta, who's 5G RAN infrastructure lead at Qualcomm, um, to walk us through their capabilities. Hello, 
My name is Gerardo Gerretta, Qualcomm Head of 5G Infrastructure Business and Product Management Team. I'm pleased to join the Quad Open Run Showcase today to share updates on Qualcomm 5G Infrastructure 2.0 solution and to talk about our commercial partnership across the Quad and globally. A few months ago, Qualcomm has introduced the 5G DU X100 accelerator card. This will accelerate the cellular ecosystem transition towards open and virtualized radio access network by offering a high performance, low latency, and power efficient turnkey solution. This card seamlessly plugs into standard commercial off the shelf server COTS to offload CPU from latest intensive and compute intensive 5G function, such as being for me channel coding, and massive memory computation, all needed for high capacity deployment. 5G DUX100 will significantly enhance open and virtualized network operator deployments by increasing performance, reducing the number of CPU and cores required, and reducing power consumption and allow for enhanced user experience to consumer. This card will basically turn data center into high performance and energy efficient 5G infrastructure. There is a need and space for innovation in the area of open fear. Qualcomm is well positioned to lead in this space, building on our leadership and expertise in the area. Qualcomm has a complete solution from small cell to macro cell. Our solution can integrate both millimeter wave and sub six with global band support, which means they can be used by vendors and operators for any kind of deployment we may encounter in the future. Our solution provides a comprehensive open RAM foundation and a platform to deploy innovative, high-performance, virtualized, and disaggregated 5G networks at commercial scale. One of the key benefits that is talked about in the history is cost saving. Well, recent studies are showing that up to 40% saving for CAPEX and 35% in OPEX saving. This is significant saving. Qualcomm has closed relationship with many global operators and ecosystem players. We continue to work across the ecosystem to drive global 5G open eventual lies run growth. For example, on the EVO Mobile Congress, On the eve of Mobile Congress, we jointly announced plans for Rakuten Mobile and Qualcomm Technologies to collaborate to develop a next generation 5G radio unit with massive MIMO capabilities and distributed units, DUs. Additionally, Qualcomm and HP recently announced plans to collaborate to deliver the new 5G distributed units powered by Qualcomm Technologies inline accelerator card, the Qualcomm X100 5G run. These are real world examples of the readiness of this technology. We are also proudly working, collaborating with the engineering team of NEC, Fujitsu, Marvenir, Ertel, and many others. There is a perception that because Open Run involves multiple vendors, it increases risks. In reality, existing networks already comprise of subcomponents for multiple vendors. Open does not mean accessible to anyone. It only means that the spec of the interface is published and connecting to that interface still requires gaining access to it. In addition, auditing closed network for security breaches is difficult. In contrast, open run and open networks allow for the deployment of proving cutting edge security systems that examine the behavior of the various subcomponent and use AI to detect breaches. Qualcomm is a supporter of the Quad's work on Opera, collaborative effort to stimulate large-scale commercial deployment and private network is essential. We call for continued high-level collaboration statements by the government leaders, joint funding projects, including infrastructure and test labs alongside collaborative feasibility studies for joint projects. Thank you very much for your time.
Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me in this Quad Open Run Showcase event. And thank you also to Open Run Policy Coalition for inviting me uh, to speak in behalf of uh, ESPAN and to present our, our solutions. Uh, let me go for a short intro of who we are. Um, ESPAN is an American company which provides a full 5G end-to-end -end open run uh, solution. Our goal is to break uh, the status quo of how mobile networks have been traditionally deployed by providing high performance radios that are simple to deploy and to manage, always based on open standards and interoperability. We provide um, 5G device stations along with support infrastructure for up to 40% less DCO than traditional vendors. We believe that um, in order to increase the security and resilience of the networks, we need to extend the supply chain's capacity. This cannot be done with just a couple of vendors. Our open run technology means that our 5G equipment is completely interoperable with other vendors, unlike that of larger suppliers. We have uh, already fully developed our 5G technologies and our products are commercially available and already uh, you know, deployed massively. So let me uh, start uh, explaining about what are the markets that we believe that they are pushing for open run. And this will match with our you know, uh, strategy and the portfolio that we're presenting related to open run. So the major, the major, the major markets that we see that are requesting open run is public networks, so mobile network operators, or carriers, uh, private networks, and finally fixed wireless access. Let's start with the first one, uh, public networks. So we went to mobile network operators. We see that uh, there is a major interest in open run. Uh, from, I mean, we have a lot of experience to work with tier one operators. Uh, we have uh, we have shipped more than one million radios, uh, you know, to more than a thousand customers in in over a hundred countries. Um, in, in 4G and now in 5G. In 5G, we are you know we are one of the key vendors of the unique. Um, I think it's still the the, the only uh, fully virtualized uh, 5G network, commercial 4G and 5G network in the world. This is Rakuten. So we have been working with them for the last two years. We are uh, you know deploying the 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 is to reach to 50,000 uh, uh, radio space stations, 4G and 5G. Uh, for using open run, and this is uh, a real open run um, network, meaning that you have, for example, I think we are around six radio vendors involved in this in this network. Uh, we ask and we provide uh, 4G and 5G on the 5G side. We're we're focusing on the testification side, so we are providing the radios, the millimeter wave radios. Um, so uh, we bring here our radio and part of the of the software, the DJ, for example, in 4G and 5G. And this is a, a clear case of a, of a real commercial network working with Open Run. So it's something that is working, is existing, and, and it's something that vendors like Espan, you know, can scale and can commit to to deploy this type of networks. Another thing important to highlight is the that as i mentioned at the beginning we are very focused on cre on, on bringing a solution that is uh easy to deploy and manage and this uh, can be shown here in the in the number of awards that we received uh, on a yearly basis uh, 2021 we received three awards one for uh, excellence in commercial deployment open run uh, for the rakuten and the millimeter wave together with the rakuten is our partner there and then recently, three months ago, December 2021, we received two awards from uh, First Innovation uh, Wireless, uh, one for private networks and the, one, and the other one for fixed wireless access. And this is also that, you know, as I mentioned before, these are the markets that we are targeting. So we can see that the portfolio we have matched nicely for all these three markets. Let's go to private networks. Private networks uh, normally, I mean, basically, is uh, networks that are focused for a specific use case and vertical. You know, could be uh, factories, for example, or enterprise, or hospitals, or you know, oil and gas. So now, five G has been a very well adopted technology, uh, and there is a lot of interest here. We have developed. I mean, we have deployed last year more than seventy uh, private networks. As you can see here, we are doing like, you know, 5G industry products here. I would say that is the main one. A lot of indoor products here. We also have air to ground giving connectivity to airplanes, 5G connectivity. So we use macro open run radios that are on the ground focusing on the sky and giving coverage to the airplanes. We also connected cars, for example, in Millbrook in the UK, testing, you know, everything that is the, from autopilot to security in the roads, public transport. And finally, CBRS, 
that for us is like an entity, like a like a whole group in itself, because it embodies a lot of verticals, like in enterprise, education, hospital, oil and gas, rural. So uh, we believe that private networks has a, a lot of potential for for up and run because of the you know the flexibility of the deployment and also the advanced features that you can reach using this type of architecture. Um, one of the things that we learn is that uh, one of the main challenges in private networks is the integration. So what we did is like to partner with many uh, ecosystem, I mean companies from the ecosystem, from the five G core, the devices, the servers, even the radios. And we uh, started to integrate with them. So we are capable to provide a 5G network in a box. That means that you get two radios and a full 5G, you know, five, full 5G uh, network functioning, and you can de uh, deploy it in a matter of one day because everything is pre-installed by, by Airspan with all these partners. And this has been a big success. If we want to fix wireless access, this is the third market. Exactly wireless access is the um, is uh, these areas, for example, that they don't have like good coverage or they don't have no coverage at all. And you have to, you know, provide a specific coverage to, to these areas. You can think of rural areas, suburban areas. And the idea here from Aspen is like, okay, how can we break the way uh, networks are, tra are, are traditionally deployed? Like instead of going to, um, uh, you know, like, like a macro using a tower that it can take months to deploy, you know, we don't talk about fiber because fiber can take even years. So how can we do that faster, like meaning that days? So what we do is like we create the whole solution using open run and also a smart radius. For example, here you can see that we were using on the picture of the right uh, a strand, like the strands that you have on, on the city. And here, you know, we have a, a situation in Long Island that you only have like 50 macros. This was not enough to provide a good coverage service. We were capable, and these 50 macros were deployed in, in a number of, you know, you know, more than two or three years to deploy it. We were able to densify, I provide a very good uh, service in a matter of nine months, and we deployed uh, 20,000 radios in nine months using these strands. So let me jump into the portfolio of, of ASPAN that really aligns quite nicely with all these markets that we're trying to, to tackle. And first of all, just to give you an, an explanation of what we provide, this is the standard diagram that you can find in our alliance. Uh, so here in the in the green square you have the the radio the CU the DU and the RU and the top you have the rig the line intelligent controller controller from Airspan we are an end to end truly open open run then that means that you can get the software and the hardware from us we manufacture our own hardware we do our own radios together with the software um, let us go to the software so from the software we do the CU and the DU right is everything cloud native and we believe that there is no you know single uh, I mean, there's no silver bullet to succeed with a virtual virtual run with, with a virtualization. So we are doing a split 7.2, the Orion Alliance, but we also provide radios with a split 2. So you get an RDU and also we are studying the split 6 from a small cell forum. Uh, and we can also provide like a full GNOB uh, radio. So that means that we can provide a modularized solution that adapts to the needs of the use case and also the transfer, for example, that you have. We also provide like a management system, the ACP, Airspan Control Platform, that basically control the radios, you know, all the, all the, all the KPIs, uh, counters, as uh, you can get them from here. And also that's like an orchestration of, of, the, of the Kubernetes platform. But of course, this is open, based on open standards. So that means that you can connect to any, you know, third-party orchestrator. And finally, the RIG is something that we are developing our X apps and also happy to, to work with other uh, X apps and rig vendors to, to improve our performance of the radius. Finally, we move to the hardware. As we as we mentioned, as I mentioned, we have a quite diversified portfolio. We do from a high power radius to a small uh, power radius. So you can see here the macros using sub six, 32 by 32 massive MIMO, and a millimeter away, for example, from Rakuten 128 antennas. And then we have a small cell outdoors, like the one in the bottom, the airspeed. That is like a like a five watts, nice to do densification. And then we have, like, for example, specific products for strands, very, very commonly used for cable operators in the US or Asia, for example. This is easy to deploy. You just have to hang them on, on the strands. And then indoor, we have a big variety of type of radios. We have millimeter wave, uh, the air velocity 6200 or sub six and different versions. Like you can go to a split seven or run, or you can go to a split two. And finally, the air star. Uh, that is like an indoor outdoor uh, radio. So you put it in indoor and it gives also coverage through the window to the outdoor. So as you can see at Aspen, 
we really are focusing on, on, on really um, being a true open run uh, vendor, interoperable, interoperable with other with other uh, uh, um, partners, and we want to to bring a portfolio uh, that feeds all these three markets, as you can see, and all these readies are commercially available and, and already deployed massively in different in different markets. So thank you very much for the time. Hi, um, I'm Tor Sekino, the deputy head of mobile system business unit at Fujitsu. Today, I'll be talking about Fujitsu's progress on open run deployments with the slide deck. Um, next slide. Um, first of all, I a little bit touch upon Fujitsu's network vision. Fujitsu mainly has five key technology areas that support our key focus area. Focusing on the network areas, Fujitsu has consolidated the solution to the 5G and the beyond society. Fujitsu's network technology to provide 5G and beyond, 5G, beyond open network equipped with high performance, flexible and scalable capacity, high efficiency and low power consumption, together with superior technologies of AI ML, computing, security and converging technologies. We think AI machine learning and security are also important for 5G and beyond especially. Um, I explain about the Fujitsu network technology in a little bit detail. So um, in 2019 is when we really started working and deploying our all run compliant 5G product. Since then, all of our 5G centralized unit, CU, distribution distributed unit, DU, and radio unit, RU, has been ORAM compliant, which means that we are committed to ORAM. At that time, we used hardware-based 5G CU and DU, and now we are developing the cloud-native 5G centralized unit, CU, and the distribution to DU on top of the cloud platform. The 5G software CU DU are able to support a public cloud platform such as AWS and Azure as mobile network use cases. These 5G CU DU software needs to be managed by service management and orchestration framework, SMO. That is where platform for AI ML apps running in rig. We also have our digital arena solution on top of AI ML, which we think one of our value proposition as well. We have a technique to achieve high efficiency RFU component for RU. This is one of the reasons that this network selected Fujitsu as a 5G um, RU supplier last year. And we believe security and integration are also very important to make 5G successful. So we establish 5G lab in Texas for these reasons. Next slide. From network roadmap viewpoint, Fujitsu is using 5G beyond optical, wireless, and software technologies to create cloud-native network that are virtualized end-to-end. -end. Three, uh, three key areas are Fujitsu's value proposition mainly. First, our open network technology to provide uh, to drive OLAN and VLAN. It supports public cloud platform, including AWS and the Azure infrastructure. Um, second value proposition is, uh, is um, built-in intelligence, which allows various devices and services to be combined by leveraging automation, derived from a cutting edge AI and the deep learning, as well as uh, security technologies. And Third value proportion is green technologies, of course, which aims to limit the increasing power consumption by building a sustainable infrastructure using tech techniques such as photonics, electronic convergence. Next slide. 
Um, this is slide shows um, high level view of the our network automation technology for 5G open run. Fujitsu has cutting edge AI ML technology and we will utilize them on top of leak function to monitor multiple parameters in the network's nodes and to predict the network behavior. And also Fujitsu has quantum inspired computing, um, this is an era, which is combined and, and derives optimum network resources allocation in a very efficient manner. As shown in the figure, unbalanced processing load in each network nodes are balanced. Um, the peak load will be reduced. That improves uh, all network efficiency. The combination of AI, ML, and digital ANIRA in, enables optimum, optimum monitoring and prediction of the network behavior and proper operation of the 5G network. Next slide. Um, we shipped the world's first remote radio head in 2004, and we keep improving the radio technology to provide the good quality and high, um, high efficiency um, radio unit to our customers. For 5G and beyond the 5G era in 2020s, uh, of course, we already have a good skill set for power amplifier equipped with digital pre-distortion DPD, and we continue to improve it to adapt 5G frequency as well. And we have been developing multi-chip module MCM, which provide few gigabit per second radio links in frequency range of few 10 gigahertz. For 60 era in 2030s, we have reached, uh, researched and uh, developed the gallium nitride gun and the indium phosphide INP devices, which will serve 10 fold faster communication links in sub terahertz band. Next slide. Uh, regarding the 5G market trend, um, ORAN is open architecture of 5G RAM network based on standard defined by ORAN Alliance. The architecture supports and compliance the 3GPP standard, of course. Market share of the ORAN compliant products has been increasing. Again, this is our target market. Fujitsu provide ORAN compliant products and that provide flexible deployment um, promotes agility and RONA TCO, total cost ownership. Next slide. Um, I don't think I need to explain this slide because everybody in here knows what value of ORAN is. The ORAN provides uh, no vendor locking, flexible pipe to meet user requirement, and improve user quality of experience, as an example. And now, the, when we think about the how to accelerate ORAN deployment, we believe multi vendor interoperability is the key to ORAN vendor diversification. In order to ensure multi vendor interoperability, we think we need a facility to help with multi vendor operational uh, checks and comprehensive end to end testing. Fujitsu is ready to take the role by providing mobile integration and testing center, we call it MITC, established recently in Texas, US. It enables to serve teleco operators and vendors to check interoperability of ORAN profiles and VLAN operations. MITC makes possible through and comprehensive multi vendor verification environment um, via its end-to-end -end testing. Um, this is the side. Um, this is message, enable um, deployment of a true open run globally and contribute to a sustainable society through technology leadership. This is our kind of message. Um, that's, all, that's all from me. And I'd like to say thank you. Thanks for having an opportunity to talk about 5G ORAN journey. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Dan Picker. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Insego. Insego is the former Novatel Wireless, inventor of the hotspot, and actually the trademark owner of the term MiFi. Insego is based in San Diego, California, and um, we actually have offices around the world, including Australia and Japan. So um, we sell our equipment through tier one operators in the US, as well as as many as 15 major mobile operators abroad. We also sell into private networks um, for purposes of enterprise, um, government, first responders. Um, we sell for purposes of distant learning, smart cities, um, and really to, to deliver high speed broadband wherever it's required. Our equipment is all ORAN compliant and we're an active member of the ORAN community, including the ORAN Alliance and the ORAN Policy Coalition. So if we look at where our products really fit into the whole picture um, of, of a 5G mobile network, we are an extension of the RAN to the very edge of the network. We are the on-ramp for devices, whether they're mobile devices or cameras or IoT devices, we're the first stop that those devices make to reach the rest of the network and ultimately the internet and ultimately the cloud. Um, and with, with that, um, the performance of the overall network is only as good as what our equipment can provide. And for this reason, we provide extremely high capacity equipment up to many gigabits per second and very, very low latency. And some of our equipment also has additional capabilities to be able to actually do extra processing and have extra storage right on the edge to supplement the MEC or the multi-access edge cloud that might sit on the other side of the network. And this, by doing this, it enables us not only to be able to allow our devices to be managed from the cloud, but it actually allows us to be a bigger part of the actual solutions that our equipment um, is used for. And you can see we sit right on the edge at the other side of the 4G or 5G link, and we have our component that's in the cloud as well. So this really enables us to be used in open RAN compliant and 3GPP compliant networks really throughout the world for any application you can think of from emergency response to um, work from home, to smart warehouses, to schools. Um, and, and once again, because of this cloud component that really comes with all of our equipment, it can all be remotely managed as well. So to give you a view of just a fraction of our portfolio, you can see it goes from the, the smallest, highest performance mobile hotspots on the left side. That little device can deliver really broadband speeds, multiple gigabits per second, um, wherever you happen to be. And those can be used by consumers and they're also used by, um, for example, traveling insurance agents, for example, can really bring their quote unquote cable modem with them. Um, also indoor wireless devices of various types um, and outdoor devices that can really deliver broadband data to um, either a house or an entire building or even an apartment building. And then finally, as we move to the right, you get industrial equipment that's a little bit more ruggedized to go into a first responder vehicle or maybe to, maybe to sit on a factory floor or in a robot, for example, that may be moving around. All of these applications have one thing in common, and that's that they are part of critical infrastructure for a company or a government or, a, um, or an enterprise. And for that reason, we take security very seriously, starting with building security in to the core of the chipsets we use and the software that we put into them. Um, and the hardware that we wrap around those chipsets. And then we take it for third party penetration testing just to make sure we did our job right and there are no vul vulnerabilities. And then finally, we wrap an optional third layer around that that allows you to optimize the security for the application you're delivering. And that could be content filtering, it could be allowing the device to detect threats in the network around it. 
these are all things that are built into our devices and manageable through our cloud backend. Those sort of capabilities have allowed us to really work with many, many customers um, throughout the world, whether they're operators or enterprises or technology partners. One example of an application that we're involved with, um, with VO RAM community is a smart warehouse. And in fact, we're involved with a number of similar applications that are warehouses or factories where you have a combination of perhaps autonomous vehicles that need to be run through a very low latency network um, to do inventory management, to carry products from one place to another, um, maybe to enable AI and ML for object and people tracking and detection. Um, and even we have a couple of installations where personnel are walking around with AR or VR glasses um, to either to do servicing of tasks or identification of, of inventory. And this requires um, a very high performance device to run those, those glasses. Um, another example, um, we have a couple of uh, Fortune 500 retailers that both kind of share on that they don't have they don't have an IT department that can be at each of their sites because these are very large organizations with thousands of stores. And so what they need is something that's very reliable. They're not going to have to send personnel out to reinstall and that they can manage remotely in our cloud re, our cloud management platform is really the perfect thing for that so um, we've really found a place there as well and these both of these examples are using oran um, compatible networks so with that we'll just kind of wrap up here um, it was very nice to be here today and to talk to you a little bit about Insego. Um, really we provide all of the performance and all of the, the, the reliability and security that you'd expect for the most demanding applications um, wherever you would um, need to use them. And as we mentioned before, we're being used in all of the quad countries today, and we have equipment really being used throughout the world. So thank you very much for having us today. I appreciate your time. Hello, my name is David Nanto. I'm from NEC Corporation, from the 5G Group, and I'm very pleased to be with you here today at the Open RAN Showcase. I'd like to talk a little bit about our company and what we're doing with 5G and what we're doing with Open RAN. Let me start by talking about our company. NEC is a company that was founded a long time ago, 120 years ago, in fact. We started as a joint venture between a Japanese entrepreneur and the manufacturing arm of AT&T, the large Ameri American carrier. This entrepreneur had the vision of wanting to provide telecom equipment, telephones, to, the, uh, to Japan throughout the country. And that was our start. We started in the telecommunications space. We have a long history there. And eventually we entered new additional segments. We started in telecom, but we entered into IT in the hardware business, software business, and system integration business. Today, we have a broad portfolio, as you can see from this picture. We do everything from aviation and satellites to submarine cables. We do telecom equipment, and we work in many different verticals, including manufacturing, logistics, retail, uh, financial services, and even healthcare. We're about $27 billion in revenue, and we spend about $2.6 in R&D every year. We have about 110,000 employees in the company. 5G is important to our corporation. We announced that 5G uh, would be a growth pillar for the company. And why are we excited about it? We're excited because we see that it will change our world in many, many different ways. We think that it's a foundational technology 
people have talked about the Internet of Things. They've talked about Industry 4.0. And we think that 5G is the technology that will make that happen. It will change and allow for autonomous vehicles. It will change the way we use robot, uh, robots and robotics in uh, manufacturing, as an example. It will enhance what we can do with augmented and virtual reality. And it will change how we use AI as we, as we connect the virtual and physical worlds. In many, many different industries, we see change coming in transportation and manufacturing, uh, in sports and in retail, even healthcare. But we should say that we do not believe that this is something that will come to fruition just because of one company. We think that it's going to take the combination of lots of players to bring this to pass. Of course, the telco network is important. It's critical. It's the core technology infrastructure that underlies all of this change. We have to have mission critical uh, telco networks that provide the 5G service. But in addition, we need cloud to provide content and service where it's needed and when it's needed. We expect industry to be involved and how they use artificial intelligence or artificial reality, how they use robotics and autonom uh, autonomous vehicles. That will happen in the industry. And all of this will require a lot of new innovation in the world. And we think that that innovation will come because of openness. We saw the same thing happen in our IT side of the business in the past as systems went from closed to open, we saw new players enter the market and the ecosystem start to grow and innovation flourish and lots of new solutions uh, were uh, created on that side. And we see the same thing happening on the telco side. We're committed to it. We're committed to an ecosystem approach. We're pleased uh, to have announced our uh, suite of products, which we call NEC Open Networks. This is a combination of our own technology products. As I mentioned, we have a long history in telecommunications. Our own products, but also products from the ecosystem, from our partners, put together using the standards of ORAN so that we can address different types of use cases, that we can address cost because we have uh, the a best of breed approach. And we think that innovation will flourish in this environment. We're committed to it as a corporation and we're investing in it. What do we offer our, um, as NEC? Well, NEC has been a leader in, the techno in this technology space for many years. We have the world's first massive MIMO uh, radio units. The, the product was recognized by Leading Lights and was selected as a winner of the best uh, new open RAN product in 2021. We are the most deployed uh, radio unit provider, open RAN radio unit provider in the world. Of course, we have our transport network business. Uh, we have over 100 customers around the world, and we're in 150 countries. We've been involved in Packet Core for over 25 years. Our cloud-native 4G, 5G converged core uh, is a, uh, was also selected by carriers and in private 5G. It was a winner uh, from Leading Lights as well as the best new uh, open uh, core product in 2021. And of course, we have a subsidiary company uh, called Netcracker, which is the market leader in service orchestration. All of these technologies, uh, plus our system integration, is the core that we bring uh, to the market. Now, um, where, we, where do we play? Uh, we are throughout the world, of course. Our headquarters are here in Japan, but we've built centers of excellences around the world uh, with our know-how uh, addressing different parts of the solution. In our transport business, we have a COE in Europe and in Latin America. For our open RAN business, we have our implementation center uh, in the UK. We have business development headquartered in the United States and our labs where we test the ecosystem partners and our products are in India. Let me just take a moment and talk more about uh, our approach we believe that a partner ecosystem approach is the best for the market. We're committed to it, as I said, but we also have experience with mission critical systems and uh, large scale systems and the issues relative to stability and performance of those systems. So we believe that it's important to pre-validate uh, members of the ecosystem to ensure that uh, we provide the right level of uh, 
performance and stability for our customers. We do that work at pre-validation in our India location. We assure, we work on quality and quality assurance. We do our system integration out of the UK, as I said, uh, for implementation, and then we ensure full life cycle support. We wanna be the single point of contact um, at, if we're a, chosen as a system integrator and make sure that all of the components work in a best of breed uh, uh, open RAN network. We've been selected by many early adopters uh, that are looking at open RAN in the market. Of course, the earliest, the earliest movement in open was in Japan uh, with NTT Docomo, a very large experienced um, with a uh, carrier with a large customer base. We were uh, involved with them and we're working jointly with them to develop RIC. We also worked with Rakuten, who's a, start uh, a startup, if you will, or a new player in this space in the Japanese market. Outside of Japan, we've worked with, we're working with early adopters in Europe with Telefonica as their prime system integrator, where they're working on pilots in four different countries and with Vodafone and with Deutsche Telekom. We're excited to be working with these companies and help them implement and realize ORAN. So let me just summarize what we, what we bring to the table and why uh, you should consider uh, talking to us about your ORAN needs. NEC is a player that has been around for over 120 years. In fact, you might say that we're the oldest ICT player in the market. Uh, we understand mission critical systems. We've been doing it for many, many years. We understand the technology because we're a maker of the technology. We're a system integrator and we specifically understand what it takes to implement our products together. We think that we're a strong uh, a player in the market, and we would love to talk to you about your open RAN needs. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Sadeki Abeta, head of Radio Access Network in NTT Docomo. I introduced Docomo's initiative on 5G and open RAN. Now first, I briefly introduce Docomo's 5G status. The number of 5G subscribers is exceed 9 million at the end of last year, and now it's 10 million. The frequency in band we support 3.7 gigahertz, 4.5 gigahertz, and 28 gigahertz. So three band we already supported and we do carry aggression between 3.7 and 4.5 gigahertz. As for the 5G coverage, the number of base stations exceed 13,000 as of September last year, and plan to deploy 2,000 at the end of this March. Our run is fully much vendor interoperable. This means in the same geographic area, we deploy the different vendors' equipment, and those are connected through the X2 interface, through the ORAN front floor interface. As for the service, we create 5G Open Partnership Program uh, 2018 to create new services and solutions with partners. The number of partners exceed 4,900 as of this January, and we create the uh, solution to solve the social issues. So we have already created more than 300 solutions working with partners. And I guess everyone already know why open RAM. So especially for the 5G era, different type of deployment scenario we have. For example, uh, we deploy the my, uh, smart manufacturing, stadium, uh, high uh, dense traffic area. So different type of deployment scenario. In case of the uh, traditional single vendor case, we need to wait a vendor provide all the solution 
if we want to support different kind of the services. However, in open case, we can choose best vendors, best solutions uh, in the world. So uh, open run enable mix and match of solutions from the multiple vendors. And the breed, breed, best of breed solutions actually we have already achieved. This is our open run. So as for the 5G, uh, we use the open run front pole. So between the CUD and RU, we connect it through the ORAN front pole interface. We have three GNOB vendors and uh, two RU vendors is in commercial. And the additional two RU vendor already selected after day one, according to deployment scenario concerning cost and performances. As for the RU, we already support various type RUs. As mentioned, three band frequency band we already supported and different transmission power uh, according to deployment scenario and also the configurations according to the installation site. We also support ENDC between 4G and 5G through the X2 interface. This X2 interface defined by 3GPP and some more detail is defined by ORAM Alliance. So profile is defined by ORAM Alliance. So those are the complementary. So uh, thanks to the open interface, we choose the best solutions. And we can also avoid the supply chain risk. So and now we are working for the VRAM, but uh, there are some challenges for VRAM. So not only just the merit, the merit, but uh, I think everyone also knows. So what challenge we have in VRAM? What's a TCO? Of course, uh, uh, using that uh, cost server, we can expect it to reduce the cost, but uh, we need to consider the total cost, uh, not only the KPX, but also the OPEX how we can reduce. And second one is that uh, in case of the open run, so operator need to the integration and also the much better interoperability testing. And third one that is the performances. So uh, compared to the dedicated hardware, so purpose build hardware, uh, <clears throat> how much performance we can achieve with code server review point capacity throughput and power, power consumptions. But working with a uh, multiple partner, especially for the hardware accelerator, we believe that uh, we can achieve that uh, uh, competitive performance with accel hardware accelerators such as FPGA, GPU, and ASIC. So to accelerate the open net work, what to mitigate that the challenge of open RAM, we create open 5G open RAM ecosystem last year. We work with, with multiple partners uh, listed here. So we have the hardware partner, software, accelerator, and virtualization uh, platform vendors. So working with them, we create that uh, uh, flexible, and the powerful VRAM. Here is just our sum, uh, summarize of our activity ORAM. As you may know that we established ORAM Alliance uh, 2018 February and launched the 5G services mentioned at uh, uh, March 2020 and uh, adding a new frequency band or adding a new equipment. And uh, uh, last year we published a white paper I briefly introduce later. And this year, we uh, established the uh, remote access uh, shared lab, I will explain. So here is a white paper uh, we work with partners. This white paper uh, treated not only the benefit, but also the challenge which I mentioned. And uh, uh, what so target we have 
for this uh, our uh, open run uh, systems. Some more detail, please see and visit our, our white paper. And this uh, February, so just a few uh, weeks before, we uh, started the uh, OREC shared open lab. So this open lab operator can access to our shared lab remotely from the overseas. So uh, they don't need to prepare the lab. They don't need to uh, assign that the people. So, but uh, they can select it, the uh, different type uh, VLAN, software vendor, virtualization platform, code server, and flat hardware accelerators, and can do the various tests, the single one core test to the uh, performance test, such as the loaded test, uh, assuming the Tokyo metropolitan area or rural area or handover performances. So different type of the uh, test environment uh, we have and you, uh, the operator can do the test. So by using OREX share lab and with Dogma support, operators can greatly reduce overall cost and time and share the know-how for open run introduction. And one of the uh, important uh, feature of the open run is a uh, intelligent run. So, uh, radio intelligent controllers. From the uh, 3G4G era, we uh, collected the data and uh, uh, using such uh, data uh, to enhance or to optimize our network. So in 5G, we also collected the data and uh, uh, optimized network. And also, uh, especially for the, at the uh, beginning, we automatically set up the configurations. So our operator just install the equipment, automatically uh, set up the con their configurations. So uh, we uh, provide the rig functionality step by steps. Finally, uh, I would like to introduce our OREC site. This is also just open uh, end of the uh, February. And some more detail, uh, today's I talk uh, is uh, shown in this uh, OREC site. So please visit our OREC site. Thank you very much. Hi. I'm Mirsad Shabchich, Vice President of Product Management at Pivotal Comware. Pivotal Comware started by inventing holographic beamforming, a breakthrough in electromagnetic physics, which allows Pivotal's antennas to harness, shape, and direct radio waves so network operators can maximize capacity, coverage, and throughput on demand. Holographic beamforming has order of magnitude advantages over legacy beamforming methods in cost, size, weight, and power consumption. Millimeter wave spectrum offers enormous capacity and allows mobile network operators to compete for $100 billion broadband market typically reserved for wireline technologies. Rich, immersive, and fast approaching metaverse experiences are only possible with millimeter wave connectivity. But millimeter wave signals face significant propagation and penetration challenges. Today, Pivotal Comware is a global leader in 5G millimeter wave repeater infrastructure solutions. Our millimeter wave product ecosystem allows our customers to plan precisely, deploy quickly, and operate at absolute lowest total cost of ownership. We start with Wavescape, the ecosystem's orchestrator. Wavescape isn't a repeater at all, but a cloud-based network and economic modeling tool. Pivotal built Wavescape from the ground up to leverage the physics of highly deterministic millimeter wave signal behavior. Wavescape ingests 10 centimeter resolution GIS data to precisely and accurately determine where to place network elements, small cells and repeaters, in order to achieve greatest coverage for least cost. 
unique capability to plan in 3D, along with machine learning attributes providing situational awareness of real estate and line of sight constraints, allows Wavescape to evaluate numerous deployment strategies, whether for mobility or fixed wireless access. The result is strategic and tactical understanding of how to build and monetize your millimeter wave network. Pivot 5G gets real about solving millimeter wave propagation challenges. We designed it with total cost of ownership and accelerated deployment top of mind. Costing a fraction of a small cell price, fiberless, weighing only eight pounds and requiring just under 30 watts of power, Pivot 5G is the ultimate network element needed for cost-effective deployment of millimeter wave 5G networks defined by Wavescape. Easy to permit and install, Pivot 5G will be in place and on air before you make real estate plans for the expensive fiber-connected small cell. The third member of Pivotal's product ecosystem is the Echo 5G subscriber repeater. Its purpose is to get millimeter wave signals indoors which it accomplishes by creating a portal through window glass. Without the Echo 5G, millimeter wave has a hard time penetrating glass. And when it does, often at an angle, it provides just a small wedge of coverage near the window. We call this problem structural shadowing. The Echo 5G is a customer installable on the window precision beamforming repeater designed to counteract millimeter wave penetration, reflection, and structural shadowing losses so it can gently flood an interior with millimeter wave signal. Because all glass is not created equal, Echo 5G product line offers solutions for both standard and energy efficient windows. The fourth and final member of the ecosystem is cloud-based intelligent beam management system, IBMS. Every pivot and echo unit is equipped with an IoT modem. IBMS leverages this IoT connection via LTE to provide fault management, configuration management, and performance management capability. It further leverages holographic beamforming's unique properties to optimize network performance and assurance. All Pivotal repeaters offer ultra-low latency, network transparency, RAN vendor interoperability, and you guessed it, ORAN compliance. We have built an ecosystem of products critically important for solving millimeter waves existential challenges by designing for interface agnosticism. The challenge was real and is the main reason we support ORAN initiative as we continue to innovate and expand our product ecosystem. Thank you for your kind attention. To learn more about Pivotal Comware, please visit our website at www.pivotalcomware.com. Hi, this is Ganesh Chandragrama, Head of Integrated Products and Ecosystems at Radiosys. Today, I want to talk about our open RAN solution offering, and uh, without wasting much time, let me get into the next slide. A quick introduction about uh, Radiosys. Uh, we being a company headquartered in, in the US, uh, founded in 1987, and we've been supplying open telecom solutions for more than three decades, and uh, we are now part of the Geo Platforms Limited Group, which is a subgroup within Alliance Industries, the largest private sector enterprise in India. As part of our offering, we, you see that we offer a variety of products and solutions here, and right from our media product, which is the media server, deployed across the globe in various operator networks and enterprises, uh, serving hundreds and thousands of uh, subscribers, in millions of subscribers in every network. And uh, we also have open and disaggregated solution both for wireless and wireless and uh, here we will talk about our open run solution primarily but we also have a disaggregated wireless solution open box loyalty white box loyalty solution we have a digital endpoints group which takes care of uh, providing cps various phone devices iot gateways and platforms for the digital endpoints and we have a network services division which takes care of uh, all the end-to-end -end consulting, network design, open RAN style system integration, uh, benchmarking and optimization of the solution. So these are the various ways in which we enable our customers integrate, take care of the integration and the management of the solution in deployment. Our approach to telecom solutions and telecom products has been one of uh, adopting the 
fully open approach. Uh, what do we mean by that? We adopt all the open architectures and open standards, uh, especially in the space of wireless. We've been part of all the leading open forums, be it uh, telecom infra project or small cell forum. We've been a long time member of these forums. Uh, in TIP especially, we've been a member since its inception. And the same thing with small cell forum as well. And we've been currently engaged in the 5G and FAPI standardization in small cell forum. And we've been awarded for our open RAN contributions, uh, both in year 2020 and 2021. In ORAN Alliance, we've been contributing and leading in various working groups. Uh, we are co-chairing working group eight since 2019, and we've been making several key contributions in working group three and five as well. Various service models and ETP related ones and several CRs in uh, WG5 as well. We also have contributed to the test and interoperability uh, specifications in TFG group. And uh, we've been contributing since 2019 through a small team for the 5G open source uh, DU implementation in the ORAN open source community. And one of the key initiatives which I want to talk about uh, as part of our effort within ONF is the SDRAN initiative. Uh, we were one of the founding members of this initiative. We were able to demonstrate the integration of various different XAPs, and uh, we were able to trial this at uh, Dodge Telecom Lab in Berlin last year with the ONF near real time RIC uh, platform and the XAPs coming from different ONF partners with our CUDU solution for 5G. So, in addition to all these contributions and leadership across different forums, we've been part of several other organizations, including Open RAN Policy Coalition. Uh, through which we've been uh, participating in all the industry initiative to promote open RAN uh, across different geographies. We've been happy to be part of this initiative through Open RAN Policy Coalition. We're also members of the NextG Alliance, CBRS Alliance, and the Linux Foundation. I'll now talk about the spread and the width of our solutions, how widely deployed we are uh, through our software solution. We have been the key player enabling multiple small cell deployments across the world, both in 4G and uh, many of the 5G solutions that are being designed right now are also based on our software solution. Same thing for our Open RAN uh, solution, which has enabled the multiple Open RAN players deploying today across different geographies. We've been in the space of public safety and satellite communication too. We have enabled a good number of test and measurement vendors. And we also have been part of the innovative solutions along with some of the telcos in North America. And uh, one of the key strengths we bring as an open RAN centric player is our partnership with the ecosystem. We have the widest ecosystem partnership, be it the chipset players or the L1 providers or the RE providers. I'm not going to read out all the names that are here. You would just, by the sheer names listed here, you would see the length and breadth of uh, the partnership we have uh, across the industry along with our global audience partners. And this, I believe, is one clear way of enabling uh, multiple ORAN, open RAN deployments with our partners for various uh, different use cases. When it comes to the open RAN solution offering from Redisys, we have a 5G and 4G approach, both SA and NSA approach. We are heavily focused on the CUDU small cell components, and uh, we integrate with our partners' core network elements or near real time RIC or non real time RIC, and we kind of deploy and integrate with uh, all the leading uh, orchestrators that are out there in the market. And I also want to make a mention about all the type of radios which we have been integrating with our partners, whether it's uh, ORAN compliant radios or the older style CPU radios we've been doing this integration in various different forms in different labs and deployments. So that's our key strength in terms of the uh, interops and uh, the integration which we have done. And uh, how does this provide various options for the uh, open run deployments right from the small cells, which are indoor small cells and the outdoor small cells or the outdoor pickle cells to the tower bottom deployments to the highly centralized to virtually CU and DU. So we have an ultra flexible and ultra scalable RAN software in which we accommodate a very flexible architecture 
uh, whether it's an all in one or an option two split or an option six or an option seven dot two X split. So based on the deployment needs, we are able to uh, shape our software and uh, implement those uh, scalability and performance requirements along with the aspects of virtualizing the RAM, uh, whether it's containerized RAM in U or CU, and uh, follow the CUPS architecture and give a performance which is equivalent to the PNF. And uh, we are adding more and more optimization in the scaling in and scaling out of our VRAN solution based on a number of cells, number of layers, and so on. With this kind of evolution or the thought process in mind, we see that uh, we can uh, cater to the various different uh, needs evolving in the market, right from the current needs, which is more about VRAN solution and ORAN interfaces and uh, supporting EMBB use cases and massive MMO based deployments, both for public and private networks, which is what we are doing as of this year. We do see ourselves commercially deploying with uh, RIC X apps and the AML aspects of non real time RIC as well, along with the evolution towards release 16 in the advanced uh, ultra reliable low latency use cases and uh, deploy some of the end to end network slicing use cases as well with our support to supporting the RAM software for the RAM slicing. As we evolve further in 2024, we see that. Uh, we will be deploying massive MIMO, or sorry, massive IoT uh, use cases, the red capped uh, devices with that, and the non terrestrial network satellite solutions and uh, multiple diverse use cases like telemedicine and uh, cellular VTX. And finally, a point about the key strengths of why you, ch you should choose Redis's and we being a well-known player in the industry uh, since the earlier generations of the technology right from 2G, 3G and now 5G and decades of experience in the de deploying protocol software with well-defined interface and our solution is highly software centric and uh, hardware agnostic along with virtualization and automation it becomes a very flexible and versatile solution we have the widest interoperability in the ecosystem partnership and we have deep system integration expertise that comes within our group uh, by virtue of working with all the leading major operators here across the globe. And with that kind of combined expertise, we believe we are the best positioned uh, to serve the open RAN needs of the industry. And we would like to welcome any questions and interest around this. Thank you for your time. Uh, hello, it's Mehran Hadipur, uh, Robin Dadayo. I'd uh, like to talk to you a little bit about um, orchestration and automation for Open RAN and uh, some of the challenges that exist and how Robin solves them. Uh, Open RAN uh, is uh, getting a lot of momentum. I walk around in NWC today, you see a lot of buzz around uh, 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 how real it is and um, uh, is it deployable and, and so on. Uh, Robin has uh, open run infrastructure in production in Rakuten Mobile with more than, more than 3 million subscribers on it. So we have um, obviously built a platform that can support it and I will talk a little bit about how uh, that, uh, well, how we have done that and um, uh, uh, the platform itself and how is it hosting uh, RAN technologies. When you look at this whole uh, disaggregation and softwareization of the RAN uh, and the momentum that has built, there are a number of specific requirements, especially around real-time applications in the EU, for example, around networking, around automation orchestration, uh, around the ability to support uh, a very low footprint uh, that can host uh, network functions such as the EU natively uh, without, uh, you know, uh, a hypervisor inv involved and, uh, and so on. So Robin has built a cloud native platform uh, uh, that includes a number of enhancements to, uh, uh, above and beyond upstream Kubernetes, including uh, enhanced CNI that supports uh, um, hyper networking such as SRLV and DPDK, includes uh, capabilities such as uh, uh, complex provisioning, numerous other CPU pinning, and some of those capabilities that are added to Kubernetes to support it. Uh, uh, including uh, real-time kernel support and so on. So the platform itself is can run on a single core and can support uh, 
uh, standard x86 platform and can host both EU and CU workload uh, and in a distributed fashion. And, and, and this allows uh, the containerized deployment of RAM in a more seamless fashion. Uh, the platform uh, also requires automation. When you deploy RAM at scale, the, the challenge is going to be how I'm going to do life cycle operations at, at the large number of uh, cell sites with hardware uh, uh, upgrades, uh, uh, automation of the life cycle of the devices themselves, uh, implementation of the RAM from bare metal all the way up, and then DCAP product that we're going to talk quickly about. That's all of that orchestration on top. Uh, and that is remotely and does it centrally. So you have a situation that you can deploy the open run environment at uh, thousands of base stations on demand, automated from the front of Tampa, the hardware space all the way to the front of Tampa, applications are functioning. So when you look at uh, this whole orchestration and automation platform, uh, th th there are a number of uh, 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 orchestration aspects that have to be considered. Bare metal as a service is an important function. Uh, it, 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 you no longer have an environment that uh, everything is pre-configured. Hardware is shipped to the antenna, is plugged in and powered. Of that point on, it's recognized by MDCAP. It, it basically gets uh, configured with operating system, BIOS, all the required configurations are put in on, on the hardware element, and the bare metal is prepared for acceptance of the appropriate network function, whether it's the U and CU. Run as a service an extension of that. You basically take the bare metal post deployment and deploy the appropriate network function and from infrastructure to co co connectivity. And now you have the environment that you have a complete uh, RAM as a service deployed on demand. And that can be done at a very, very large scale. Uh, if you look at uh, this whole deployment concept, the Robin uh, creates application profiles for network functions. Your, network, your application profile could be built based on the requirement of uh, RAM workloads, uh, um, configuration of networking, uh, SRRAV, number of connections, multis to allow front hall and back hall connectivity to the same power. All those things are specified in the network function delivery. And we can do a push button deployment of the applications on demand. And this gives you a model that uh, you can deploy the entire uh, uh, operations of bare metal deployment, followed by cluster operation instantiation, cluster management, life cycle operation post deployment. And all of those things are, are automated uh, in a orchestrated fashion end to end. So these, uh, Robin provides these workflows that uh, orchestrate the network functions and their automation end-to-end. Uh, 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 -end. And these workflows could be executed centrally across a large number of devices in the inventory. This allows you to can instantiate the entire RAN, RAN infrastructure and on a very managed workflow. This reduces the time to operation, the cost of operation, the, the, the time to deployment is often deployed by 80% and uh, allow a number of life cycle automation tasks post deployment, which allows you to reduce the cost of operations and also efficiency of how RAN is deployed uh, 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 on demand. If you couple that with low footprint of, uh, requirement of uh, Robin, you, you could probably have the most efficient uh, infrastructure and orchestration model with the lowest capex and opex for deployment of open RAN. And having uh, deployed open RAN in production, we have proven uh, efficiencies that we, we can talk about in terms of uh, what we'd be able to achieve for these kind of deployments from ground up. Well, that was, I hope you guys got a quick view of uh, the benefits uh, and challenges of Open RAN. And, and uh, please, if you have any more uh, questions uh, and so on, reach out to Robin and we can take you to the more uh, deployment uh, considerations. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day. Hello, I'm Justin Dra from uh, Samsung Electronics. I'm uh, supporting uh, Samsung's sales strategy in VRAN and Open RAN. Um, today, I'm very happy to explain our solution and business uh, in 5G and VRAN solution. So let me uh, share the slide. I want to first start with how mobile market looks like in Korea, who is uh, one of the leaders in 5G. 
So Korea launched 5G in 2019, and today, just in two years, 5G accounts for more than 62% of the world traffic. And the 5G users consumes like three times more traffic than 4G users. So we all know this pattern when I stop here. And this is because all different apps we're using every day at home and office. So the question is, for operators, how can you handle this increasing traffic? The answers are first, technology. Operators start to use new hardware form factor like Messi MIMO and new AI technologies such as beamforming and advanced channel coding. Second, bandwidth. Because in the existing 4G bands, there is no room for growth. So we have to find new spectrum above three gigahertz, such as C-band and millimeter waves. And third, more sites. More traffic requires more densification of cells. The problem is all these factors require considerable investment by operators. Therefore, for them, balancing right level of performance and cost is key for operator success. So how does Samsung manage this performance and cost issue? Our strategy is to focus on chips and hardware. Samsung started 5G research from 2009. At the time, LTE was not even commercially launched in many countries. Since then, we've continued to develop our 5G solution throughout various demos and trials in all the 5G markets, such as Korea, US, and Japan. And we finally launched world's first 5G commercial network in 2018. And recently, with virtualized RAM, which I will explain a bit more, we launched massive MIMO technology that is considerable challenging even in traditional RAM. And all these achievements are based on the fact that we have strong leadership in standards and patent bodies. We are leading standardization in 5G and holds the largest officials in 3GPP. We are number one in 5G essential patents. In 2019, we launched our 6G research. All these activities show our commitment on massive amount of investment into intellectual property and R&D resources. Another strength of 5G solution is the chipset. We are one of the leading semiconductor companies in the world. And with networks, we are putting more investment on 5G chips. For higher bandwidth, cutting edge technology support, at reduced product size and increasing power efficiency. Chips are at the heart of our 5G solution. These chips are used in every radius we are delivering for different use cases. From FWA, enhanced mobile broadband, and even to coverage for rural, IoT, and so on. Samsung, can provide completely radio solution for our customers in every use cases. For our chips and hardware, we secure trusted supply chain by leveraging our best in class manufacturing in the US, Korea, and Vietnam. Also, we continue to enhance our cybersecurity for our products. One good example is we won first common criteria certification for our 5G products in the US. Thanks to our efforts in research, chip, hardware, and trusted supply chain, we've already deployed over 4 million 5G ready radios on the globe. We are providing advanced capabilities and superior performance to customers so that they build the best network in terms of performance and cost.
So, so far, I have explained what we have done for more than 10 years. But is there anything else that we can do more for the next 10 years? And we believe focusing on software is the key answer to that question. And that means we'll virtualize our core and RAM. So what does virtualization mean to operators? In the previous section, our focus was mainly about how to optimize cost while upgrading performance. Virtualization means we give a platform to operators, not only to control their CapEx and OPEX more flexibly, but also to increase their revenues. So how does this work? With VRAM, Tyco can transform their traditional cell sites into virtualized and cloud infrastructure. We support such transition in three ways. First, our VRAN is Tyco grade solution, supporting DU CU split architecture based on 3GPP. We support multi technologies such as 4G and 5G. And it is proven in the field of tier one networks. Second, it features cloud agility. Since it is software based, it supports flexible demand management for diverse prepping models. So it allows flexibility in your CapEx and OPEX location. It is cloud native solution, which can be deployed on any third party server and cloud platform. Therefore, it is easy to add new services on the infrastructure, just like a cloud. On the VRAN platform, you can host third-party apps such as video analytics, cloud gaming, drone control. This means operators now can find new revenue stream with VRAN. Lastly, it supports ORN compliant front tool. We support 7-2 interface by RDU. This is not proprietary interface which some vendors try to push. This means no lock into Samsung. Functional split is widely accepted by many vendors. Therefore, we support healthy competition and best of breed ecosystem in open RAM. On top of this, we are actively contributing for ORS standards, especially we are in chair leadership for working group three for real-time RIC. And we are developing our RIC solution based on the leadership. With our technology and solution, we are deploying the biggest VRAN commercial networks with global tier one carriers. In the US with Verizon, we launched first wide-scale commercial VRAN in 2020. And a couple of months ago, we launched the first commercial 5G massive MIMO C band radio supported by VRAN. In Europe, with Vodafone, we are deploying VRAN and ORAN commercial networks in the UK. In Asia, Historically, we have strong footprints in Tehran, in Korea, India, and Japan. Especially in India, we support Geo's 4G nationwide network, more than 400 million users, as a sole network vendor. In 5G, we'll maintain our leadership in the country. On top of that, we're expanding our VRAN in the APEC region. In Japan, with Docomo, we launched nationwide 5G ORAN solution. With ADDI, we just launched world's first commercial 5G standalone open RAN network, powered by VRAN in Japan. With TPG, we launched 
first 5G VRAN and millimeter wave trial in Australia. No other vendor is anywhere near us in scale and breadth. VRAN or Open RAN has much benefit to be realized as I explained. But as we deploy the solution in the field, we learn that there are some challenges too. First, operators do not compromise in the quality and reliability of the new technology. Vendors need to reinforce their technical and operational expertise. Second, multi-vendor environments add complexity in IoT and integration. Vendors need to equip with both telecom and IT knowledge for root cause analysis and resolution. Third, roadmap alignment across multi-vendors are another issue. Lastly, business model and ecosystem. In our experience, ecosystem of Open RAN is still at early stage to match incumbents' performance and price. Also, operators need to take more collaborative and experimental approach to lead multi-vendor integration. Because of all these challenges, operators are looking for Goldilocks combination when they talk about VRAN and open RAN supplier. On one side, they want a vendor who is willing to innovate and open to new technology and business model. I think incumbents are not flexible enough in this sense. On the other side, operators want a vendor who they can trust. To be frank, there are many startups and IT vendors who say that they can do open RAN or VRAN. However, we've witnessed they cannot meet operators' high standards or do not understand telecom network and the industry's practice. We believe Samsung is the only one who can meet these two different needs at the same time. And that is why tier ones around the world are selecting Samsung as their VRAN and Open RAN partner. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Rajesh uh, Gangadhar. I'm the uh, Chief Technology and Chief Product Officer for uh, the Access Solutions portfolio uh, within STL. Uh, I'm going to be walking you through uh, the portfolio offering uh, to address the Open RAN uh, ecosystem. Uh, now, STL is a global leader uh, and we offer open networking based solutions, both on the wireless and uh, fixed access. <clears throat> Our entire premise uh, uh, and focus is on open, disaggregated and virtualized uh, platform. From a customer perspective, STL addresses uh, telecom operators, cloud companies, citizen networks, as well as large uh, enterprises. And we are uh, situated globally um, and uh, we have offices uh, uh, across the various continents. Uh, we are headquartered in India, uh, but uh, again, uh, Europe, US, and uh, Asia, uh, including Australia, uh, we cover all of uh, the geographical uh, uh, locations. So within the open networking uh, access solutions portfolio, we offer a broad uh, set of offerings. Uh, on the radio side, uh, we cover uh, the small cell portfolio, as well as uh, single and multiband uh, macro radios. And, and our uh, offering is uh, entirely open RAN compliant, uh, which means uh, we, uh, our products adhere to uh, the ORAN front hall interface spec. Um, uh, we are offering both 7.2 uh, split, uh, as well as uh, split two. Uh, configurations to enable um, operators and entities, uh, other entities alike, uh, give them the flexibility to deploy based on the uh, deployment archetype. 
On the software side, we have two uh, products. One is the RAN Intelligent Controller. This, uh, we believe, uh, you know, forms the heart of uh, the open architecture, uh, bringing intelligence both at the edge uh, and near real-time applications as well as uh, non-real-time applications. And, and we actually have a pretty strong uh, offering here in terms of uh, the architecture that we're proposing as well as uh, the type of application and services that uh, the RAN Intelligent Controller can support. Uh, rounding out the portfolio is a programmable FTTX. This is a fully virtualized uh, uh, F, uh, last mile access uh, uh, offering. Uh, it, it basically disaggregates the OLT function. And uh, this is again, uh, you know, uh, standardized as per uh, ONF and uh, broadband forum. Uh, so all of our products are uh, open, uh, disaggregated uh, and virtualized, uh, as I said earlier. And these are all, uh, uh, you know, adhering to open networking principles and we are members and contributors to all the uh, uh, open fora that you see uh, at the bottom. On the... Uh, um, a radio portfolio, the sub six gigahertz offering. So we have, uh, as I said, uh, you know, uh, small cells as well as uh, high power macros. And our entire premise is uh, to focus on size, uh, cost, uh, operational efficiency, enabling faster deployment and simpler operations. So focus on TCO, uh, focus on operational efficiency, and again, the, <clears throat> the portfolio includes different uh, MIMO configurations, different power configurations, uh, and split uh, configurations to enable operators uh, 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 greater flexibility in deploying. Uh, the uh, macro high power units, uh, the single band units are actually 4G compliant as well. So they're backwards compliant. They support both uh, 4G and uh, 5G. So it can operate concurrently. Uh, providing uh, greater flexibility here. Uh, this is a bit of a detailed slide, but again, the, uh, the message here is that uh, we are ORAN uh, compliant uh, with, uh, you know, on the small cell side, we have both the split 7.2 and split 2 uh, configurations, uh, you know, with different uh, uh, bandwidth, uh, MIMO configuration, as well as uh, power. Um, and these are sub six gigahertz. Uh, the, the indoor split 72 Garuda is actually a GA product we are shipping uh, right now. Uh, the split two configuration uh, is, is currently in uh, development. And the outdoor split two is uh, again, to, to address the enterprise applications, uh, the in, uh, indoor and outdoor split 72 radios uh, can are uh, pretty, uh, powerful solutions for enterprise, uh, private, uh, as well as telco uh, in a split 7.2 configuration. And we're already in interoperability uh, testing uh, with our partners. On the macro, uh, our, uh, we have uh, certain exemplar radios uh, that uh, we, we are developing. Again, it's a platform-based approach uh, that allows us to quickly adapt to different bands uh, in, across the geographies. And, and, and the whole premise here is we've covered the uh, FTD and TDD configurations. Uh, and uh, the focus here again is operational efficiency and uh, greater TCO. Um, so uh, this is a product again that is uh, currently uh, in IoT uh, and, and uh, you know, very soon to be uh, generally available. Moving on to the RIC uh, portfolio, um, the RIC, uh, as I said earlier, we believe is a, <clears throat> an integral component of uh, the open architecture. And uh, we're actually, uh, we believe we are a leader in the space. Uh, we've uh, contributed to uh, the, uh, uh, an architectural change uh, in the ORAN forum. Uh, which is basically decoupling uh, the RIC elements from uh, the SMO, uh, the service management and orchestration function, uh, and, and, and really focusing on the RAN uh, set of functions to enable greater flexibility for operators, uh, both uh, brownfield uh, as well as greenfield. And uh, we've started with a focus on uh, 
non-RT RIC uh, combined with uh, the RAN ONM functions, homogenizing the element management and NMS functions, uh, thereby providing uh, automation capability to existing SONs uh, that may be uh, operational in uh, in the uh, in the brownfield networks. And these are our, our entire premise here is to define certain intermodule interfaces and, and to be able to, uh, uh, you know, enable some of the, uh, the faster operation of SON applications. And these are uh, all the way from, say, day-to-day -day operation to uh, capacity performance of uh, optimization, uh, spectrum savings, energy savings and uh, enabling new applications and services uh, that can, uh, that can uh, further the uh, you know, 5G uh, revenue uh, model uh, and revenue generation models. Uh, so this is a deeper dive on the architecture. Uh, the one, the architecture on the left uh, shows uh, uh, the SMO, which is integrated with uh, the non-RT brick. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, the RAN uh, specific functions uh, have to be separate from uh, the legacy or perhaps the integrated uh, SMO framework. Uh, and this is because we, we believe that the, the applications and services that are RAN centric uh, need to have the flexibility for implementation and integration. And the whole idea of <clears throat> an open architecture is that the operators can rely on uh, any uh, you know, vendors, uh, non-RT rig, uh, separate from the SMO uh, functions. <clears throat> the uh, architecture on the right uh, sort of describes our approach. Uh, and this is an approach that has gained uh, substantial traction uh, in, in uh, uh, ORAN forum. Uh, and this is a work item that is currently being uh, uh, discussed and uh, debated. Uh, and, and what you see here is that uh, the modules that are separated out uh, now are more RAN centric. Uh, so you have the near RT rig, the non RT rig, uh, and the RAN ONM function, um, as well as the domain orchestration. Uh, but again, that's uh, 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 RAN centric. Uh, and the intermodule intermodule interfaces that will be defined uh, in ORAN forum now allows uh, <clears throat> the trans uh, you know translation uh, and and uh, uh, inter uh, interface uh, between the the modules uh, and trans translation of uh, uh, data uh, data paths uh, and the data models that uh, are again uh, defined uh, through open APIs here. Uh, and the, the whole premise here is that uh, these, uh, these modules can now be disaggregated and separate from, uh, from a, an individual vendor perspective or can be integrated as uh, the operator may choose. Uh, and our approach to uh, uh, the our RIC platform is that we, we, while we have certain native apps that we will support, but by far we want our uh, platform to be open uh, to any third party uh, X app or R app. Um, and that's really uh, what we believe uh, that the RIC uh, should be uh, about, uh, enabling any third party X app and R app. A good, uh, perhaps a good uh, analogy is uh, that of an open source uh, OS, uh, you know, uh, which allows for. Uh, any third party uh, XAP or, uh, or, or application to be integrated. And, and this is similar, so long as you adhere to certain API con, uh, constraints, uh, you, you're basically uh, you know, uh, open to integrating. And to this end, uh, we are actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're sort of enabling uh, both the SON integration, uh, the distributed and centralized SON functions as well as that, that allows the operators uh, the flexibility to trans transform the network from their current uh, uh, you know, uh, configuration uh, to, to a more open centric configuration, but the path uh, defines, uh, is defined to be more uh, seamless, uh, providing cloud automation function on the, on the SON. And, uh, and here we, we see that uh, while the RIC uh, as a platform uh, has its uh, 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 functional elements, 
uh, there is a way to integrate into the existing SON platform, uh, thus enabling uh, the RIC to perform certain uh, automation at a much faster rate than the SON would uh, today. Uh, and, and this is something that we are really pushing uh, into the industry because this enables uh, the RIC to be adopted and adapted uh, earlier than would be uh, you know, if, if operators were to choose uh, a standalone uh, approach. So this is a path to uh, enabling the RIC uh, capabilities or the benefits uh, much earlier uh, in the non-standalone uh, architecture. Uh, this is a slide that sort of describes our uh, PlugFest uh, participation. This was uh, in September 20. Uh, we actually demonstrated <clears throat> a need to interface enablement uh, as well as a mobile load balancing uh, uh, use case at the DRRT rig, um, along with our partner, CUDU partner, ASOX. And this was uh, under the aegis of uh, Airtel uh, in India. And this was uh, again demonstrated a couple of, about a year and a half ago. So we just want to show how uh, mature or how evolved our architecture and our implementation is uh, in the RIC uh, domain. The key differentiator for our RIC, as I said, uh, you know, we truly believe that the RIC needs to be a platform, uh, uh, almost uh, independent uh, from the uh, applications and services. Uh, and, and we truly believe that enabling any third party X apps and R apps uh, to be integrated seamlessly uh, allows operators greater flexibility uh, in being able to serve uh, various use cases, uh, segments, and uh, 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 an application. So, uh, and, and one of the fundamental uh, approaches we are also taking is to build a sandbox around this that enables a third party integration. And uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is why uh, we, we believe that that will actually democratize the, uh, the whole RIC uh, and, and thereby uh, enable greater adoption and an earlier adoption uh, of the RIC. I'll end here and I thank you for the opportunity to present uh, our uh, portfolio. Uh, and we look forward to uh, hearing uh, from you. Thank you again. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm Sandeep Sharma from Tech Mahindra, heading global portfolio for 5G RAN and ORAN network services. So this topic of discussion ORAN is pretty interesting topic. And particularly, I am very excited about this topic. Reason being, uh, we at Tech Mahindra have already contributed significantly in ORAN deployments in, in different parts of the world, either in terms of POCs or the commercial rollouts. If you look at the network transformation that has happened in terms of openness and what we foresee beyond 2022 as well, it's going to evolve in a much faster pace. But before going into details of it, let's understand how the deletion networks are deployed and how it is done in the open RAN networks. If you particularly consider the RAN part of deletion networks, the radio and the basements are tightly coupled with the closed interface with the proprietary basement in place. Well, in case of your open end philosophy, the interface between the radio and the basement is open. Open means like radio could be from one vendor, basement could be from another vendor. And within the, within the basement itself, there's a disaggregation of hardware software, CU to you uh, split is also making a significant contribution in terms of different efficiencies that ORN brings in. If you look at different benefits that ORN bring in terms of four verticals, we, I can summarize it. First, the flexibility. Since a lot many players are coming in with the different architecture options of disintegrating uh, the software and the hardware and different placements of the network functions in terms of CUs and DUs, you can deploy the architecture the way you like. And it will have the operators to realize different use cases as well. Second, the innovation is an important aspect that will bring in. Since a lot many things are getting converted into software functions, you can easily transform things with a more innovative way. Finally, a third one is the automation. Since a lot of many things handle the way the IT worlds are handled, 
the faster time to market can be achieved. You can automate implementation of functions, implement the intimation of features and functionality right from the R&D stage to the production stage much quicker in an automated way. The mix of 5G capabilities and the ORN flexibilities or the efficiency they bring in, it creates a phenomena of open words. It will allow many things to realize in, in a defined way, which, which was not available in the earlier uh, ways of deploying networks or the earlier technologies. With this uh, transformation happening in, in the different network components, there are two different, uh, I would say, competencies or expertise that is required. One is the network innovation capabilities in terms of the products and the features that are required. And there's a set of, you know, OEMs in terms of trusted vendors and the, and the product vendors and the cost hardware vendors, they are doing it in terms of the different technologies that can bring in. On top of that, the orchestration layer that is required to make it end-to-end -end work and automate. But these are the innovations needs to be implemented in the network as well. Where there's a, there are multiple components coming in from different vendors in terms of softwares, hardwares, and different layers of orchestration. There comes the need of a system integrator, or I would say the continuous integrator, who can stitch things end-to-end, -end, takes an end-to-end -end ownership, and create new age end-to-end -end services so that the networks are deployed in a much faster, automated, and efficient way. And we have at Tech Mendra have in-house developed and invested in a NetOps.ai framework as well, for the faster deployment of these networks. So we at Tech Mahindra are actually bridging the gap from the innovation and the implementation. We bridge it and we make the networks realistic in, in the real world so that multiple benefits can be achieved uh, from that network in terms of scalable deployment, reduced cost in terms of total TCOs, uh, improved velocity in terms of implementing different features and functionalities, and creating the network architectures which are future ready so that the earlier generations are deployed and the future generations can easily be accommodated in the same network architecture. Apart from doing uh, the continuous integration, we also focus on uh, the different aspects of the network component as well. Starting with the ORN solutions and services, we also focus on the labs as well, so that the things that are going in the field, in the production stage, are pre-tested, pre-integrated. We already invested heavily in the lab setups across the world, so that what different you know, stakeholders can come together, we can pre-verify the stack and make it more resilient in terms of the network to be deployed. Finally, uh, third one, 5G monetization. We also have different use cases realized uh, in, in terms of uh, private 5G networks so that if any operator wants to use, utilize a specific use case, we have a solution available for the better monetization of the 5G assets. We also have a core and OSS network integration transformation services in place to have an end-to-end -end view right from the RAN to the core and we have an automated operations and managed services framework as well in terms of services and the offerings and solutions so that end-to-end -end view can be realized in a, in a commercial network and operators can rely heavily on, on the benefits of ORN and 5G together. If you look at the different stages that comes in a, in a technology right from the nascent stage where it is concept or the incubation stage to the actual network deployed in terms of commercial networks and what, how it is managed, we at Tech Mahindra are a continuous indicator partner in terms of different offerings that we are available at every stage of the network deployment right from the stage one where we get involved with the technology vendors, we, we help the CSPs in selecting the right technology, designing the right network architecture to the stage two, where when we move to the trial stage or the POC stage, and we already involved in, in multiple geographies with the multiple uh, CSPs and the OEM partners to do the POCs and the trials. These trials helps us in, in getting an estimate what can be expected out of the commercial networks and the stacks that are going to be in, in the production network or the commercial network can be tested beforehand. In the stage three of the planning, we also have services available 
with with our in-house uh, capabilities and in the platforms where we can plan and dimension the different parts of the network right from the radio to to the end to end view of the core and the edge and make it you know more efficiently deployed in the commercial network at the stage 4 of the deployment where the site infrastructure is actually deployed we 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 have a si capability to integrate things end to end get the end to end integration testing done have the knock setup to be in place test it and turn it up for a live rollout finally at stage 5 when the commercial networks are commercially rolled out and it's available for the consumers we also have the operations services in place where we take care of the operations in the long run either in terms of managed services optimization benchmarking and the performance engineering in a way techm is a continuous integration partner from the whole life cycle of the technology right from the incubation till the full deployment in the commercial network in a summary uh, techm is, is well positioned as a strategic partner uh, in terms of transformation from the legacy technology to the open ran technology based on the four pillars that we feel first the business appetite we have a strong focus on the technology as a oran we already invested heavily we have seen this transition happening much earlier and we are the first one who who invested and who have deployed helped the operators deploying uh, the commercial networks in oran and we have leveraged the competence that we have built in in creating a full technology focus in the organization and to the towards the csps we have driving projects across multiple dimensions of the network cycle right from the design phase to the actual implementation and to the operations we have the in house platforms like netops.ai for the end to end life cycle management of oran we have a multi vendor alliance in place so that the interop issues can be sorted out in a much faster way and we have an ability to drive the objectives globally fourth one uh, basically we have a global expertise but we also have a local presence in different parts of geographies we easily understand and deploy the things in a in a localized form wherever it is required for a, any specific geography on top of it we are also contributing significantly in terms or an alliance is we are member tip in various projects within tip we have participated and we are also a member of onap in a whole we provide the services we help in nurturing the technology and we work with the various organizations to make it work for the future networks if you have any questions around it feel free to connect with me i'm happy to help and explore the ways how can i support you in the future transformation of your network thank Hi everybody. Um, my name is uh, Johannes Tafasa, and I'm with uh, Worldwide Technology, or WWT. And um, over the next ten minutes or so, um, I will take you over um, our capability when it comes to um, Open RAN um, and uh, the uh, uh, mobile uh, wireless um, industry uh, overall. Just uh, a, a quick uh, overview uh, of uh, Worldwide Technology. uh we are uh, an almost 15 billion dollar annual revenue privately held company um out of that about 3 billion dollars is international business uh and we've been in business for more than 30 years uh we have about 8000 employees um and we are proud to be uh, recognized by fortune and time magazine um as a great place to work and this is really a testament of of our our values uh, and culture uh, as a company uh and we are a technology provider to more than 80 of the fortune 100 companies and, and we do that uh by um uh, working together with our partners uh who are uh, leaders in in their respective um technological fields and here's a um, a list of some of our partners um that are really leading innovation uh in multiple aspects of um technology uh we do have hundreds actually thousands of partners but these are the, some of the 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 names that that we we've, we've uh done a lot of business with and and we work with to to deliver cutting edge technology to to um our uh, customers 
Um, so now really at a high level, kind of talk about the role of system integrators when it comes to um, open RAN and generally uh, solution disaggregation uh, in, in the mobile space. Um, really the, the value of system integrators is helping operators achieve the benefits of disaggregation uh, while providing a single hand to shake and minimizing risk uh, when it comes to uh, deploying uh, solutions in a timely manner um, and um, achieving the scalability, um, the agility, and the cost efficiency the, and the speed to market that really disaggregation like uh, open RAN and pr provide, right? So balancing the, um, the openness um, uh, and, and innovation with uh, doing business in a reliable manner that doesn't um, sacrifice the quality and the consistency that service providers uh, expect from, from their vendors. And that's really where um, uh, system integrators like WWT add, add value and um, make great ideas, um, help make great ideas like Open RAN a reality for, for our industry. And in that, in that respect, um, we have uh, a three pillar um, service provider enablement model that involves our um, uh, advanced technology center that, that we call ATC for short, uh, that really enables us and our, our, our partners to deliver um, uh, products, new products and solutions. Um, and we tie that in with, with our global supply chain that allows us to, to deliver uh, large scale deployments with consistency uh, and we couple that with our implementation services, consulting services, lab services, um, and strategic um, staffing. And I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, these capabilities uh, that we have in the next few slides. So specifically for our uh, mobility wireless programs, this uh, three pillars uh, map into the five um, services that we offer. Um, the first one is um, solution definition, uh, validation, and testing. This is where we bring in um, new technologies like open RAN, uh, right? Multi-vendor solutions, disaggregated solutions, and do proof of concepts, architectural validation, and make sure that you know we we, we run functional and performance tests that that really um, um, allow us to confirm these solutions meet the the requirements that our customers have. Um, and then we take that to designing and scoping and planning this this solutions for specific markets, specific sites, uh, and then that goes into our uh, global supply chain program where we do staging uh, and, and solution build outs um, and shipping that allows us to deploy these technologies at scale uh, globally. Uh, and this um, centralized staging, staging and, 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 and deployment solution really helps accelerate time to market, time to deployment from um, three to 12 months. And uh, this is very, very critical, um, especially in this day and age where uh, su supply chain is, is a big challenge. And um, in addition to uh, shortening uh, the deployment timelines, this allows our customers um, to achieve higher quality and consistency, right? And minimize uh, failure rates, especially uh, as you uh, roll out uh, newer technology. And then, you know, we, we, we couple this, this um, steps that I've talked about so far with our um, on-site deployment and then services um, for, for those solutions. And then um, throughout the, the, the lifespan of these solutions, we, we want to make sure that our customers get the, the required support and maintenance in, in lifecycle management. Um, so just talking about a little bit about um, the, the first pillar, which is our advanced technology center. That's um, a facility that consists of uh, uh, four data centers, um, soon to be five, uh, where we bring in um, this world-class uh, technology leaders, our partners, uh, with our design capabilities uh, and allow our partners and our customers to work together um, to, to provide um, an environment where um, new technology can be created by bringing all this expertise. So if you look at, um, you know, RAN, you, you bring in um, uh, RAN solution providers, you bring in security providers, and all the players in the in the open RAN to uh, come together and work uh, and validate solutions that can meet customer requirements. 
uh, and we we you know we help our customers our, our partners take those solutions um, to to market um, in our facility at a, at a high level um, at this point we have more than 20,000 VMs, um, and uh, to date, we've actually invested more than $600 million in, in infrastructure in our labs. Uh, we have more than 200 um, OEMs, and um, our customers and partners can access uh, these labs uh, globally right, from anywhere, um, anytime. So this really provides a fantastic environment for, for um, new innovative technologies like OpenRAN. And, and our uh, global supply chain um, today uh, uh, takes place using, uh, you know, more than 4 million square feet of space that we have on three continents, right? Um, in our headquarters in St. Louis, uh, we have facilities um, in Amsterdam, um, Singapore, and Mumbai as well, globally, where we provide staging integration, uh, <clears throat> material planning, order management, and just-in-time delivery. <clears throat> Deploying at scale, um, with global supply chain is very complex, um, especially right now. Um, and our teams um, can simplify this process, right? The supply chain uh, by acting as your single point of contact to procure hardware and software, um, design, build, test, and deploy fully integrated systems um, on time and on, on budget. And and as you know, technologies is moving fast. This is very critical, right? And we see this add um, a ton of value to, to our customers. And uh, I know um, I've talked uh, a bit about our capability here as a system integrator and as a case study, and we've, we've been doing this for, for, for a while when, at a large scale. And uh, in this case study, you know, this is, this is what we do for a tier one communication service provider. Um, you know, we, we help them manage their forward and reverse logistics um, and help them deploy their um, nationwide um, radio access network. Um, and throughout this process, we save them um, tens of millions of dollars um, and uh, help them achieve timely delivery of their uh, mobile network. And this concludes uh, my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Wonderful. Thank you so much to Johannes and to all of our speakers um, from the 13 companies featured today, um, spanning across uh, all four of the, the quad uh, economies and, and beyond. Um, it's now my absolute privilege to um, welcome uh, Mr. Balaji, Chair of the National Digital Communications Council at ASACHAM to provide some uh, closing remarks. Balaji, wonderful to see you again, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. It's always a delight to be with you and all our colleagues. Uh, good morning, good day, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute privilege and an honor to be part of this ORAN showcase. Frankly, the showcase has demonstrated the depth of ecosystem partners around the globe and the Quad nations that are working on Open RAN. As ASOCHEM, We've been part of this ORAN journey for the last two years. It has been extremely uh, rewarding for us as we've engaged with governments, with like-minded uh, organizations uh, such as the Open RAN Coalition Forum and others, and with companies to create a great momentum for Open RAN. You already saw presentations from some of our members like Tech Mahindra and Sterlite today. I think the pandemic has brought forth the integral role technology plays in daily lives and has significantly accelerated the digital transformation across sectors. And therefore, against this backdrop, the importance for secure and trusted network infrastructure, and also the added benefit of increased competition, choice and affordability that, affordability that comes with open and interoperable standards make ORAN a very, very compelling proposition. Today's showcase represents another milestone in the ORAN journey. And we have some fantastic insights into the progress made by various stakeholders in this ORAN community, from companies to governments, and the commitment that the government has to support this process was very visible today. At SOCHEM, we have also taken the lead in working this initiative in India, and we've set up an Open RAN task force. And the purpose of the task force is to promote Open RAN, facilitate standards and policy formulation, and define an adoption plan for the Indian industry to deliver the benefits that ORAN can offer to develop an expanded ecosystem of mobile access operators and players. 
this initiative becomes even more important in the times to come as India and many countries across the world are on their 5G journey. With 5G proliferation to start in India soon with potential spectrum auctions coming later this year, it is very evident that the demand will only grow for deployment of, of open RAN. And the challenges that are there in deploying 5G services and building cost-effective network will be addressed by this architecture. For the Indian telecom companies, the ORAN is a viable method that can cut the network-related costs and the OPEX and also allow for more customizations as we upgrade networks to 5G technology. It will also help Indian software companies and equipment makers to not only get a slice of the uh, Indian market, but also to have a piece of the global 5G ecosystem and market that's emerging. We believe that the transformation that ORAN would yield in terms of network performance, enhanced flexibility, agility and efficiency will only further accelerate its deployment. And additionally, the market would benefit from the accelerated time to market of new services and functions. The role of equipment providers, software companies, hardware companies, system integrators, all of them is super critical and the interworking of them will only make innovation happen even faster in this space. For the success of ORAN, of course, all stakeholders such as government, communication services providers, vendors, system integrators, hardware providers will have to work together. There is no other way. And I think this initiative that we have uh, uh, across uh, the Quad nations as well as other uh, global standards bodies will only help accelerate that process even further. Uh, just to uh, say that the Open RAN task force that ASOCHEM has put together is very, very uh, keen and is going to work in a driven manner to accelerate the adoption of Open RAN to foster innovation further and expand the supply chain for advanced wireless technologies and encompass all industry st stakeholders and government to jointly create a path for successful adoption of Open RAN. And uh, we are quite certain that initiatives like the one which we are part of today uh, and the wonderful cooperation and partnership that we receive, and in fact, even best practice sharing and handholding in some cases will make us even more successful in the future. Uh, I would just once again, as Alex said, thank all the participants that came today to share their wonderful insights uh, on what they're doing in order to bring innovation to fore and to actually solve transformative problems that societies, enterprises, and, and nations across the world are facing. And with that, once more, thank you uh, for making me a part of this fabulous journey and over to you, Alex. Well, thank you, Balaji. Um, I think that's a wonderful way to close out our program today. Um, my only final uh, thanks would be to, uh, to the audience for joining us today. Um, and as you say, of course, to our um, value partners over at ASACHAM and KDOM Ren and the US Chamber of Commerce for um, their part in pulling together uh, today's agenda. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've uh, learned a lot about the, um, uh, the scope of capabilities that's out there today um, and hope that everybody has a good day or good evening wherever you are in the world. <laughs>